My name is Chris Bowser, and I'm here at Marist College in Poughkeepsie, New York, on the banks of the Hudson River, with a sadly deceased but still incredibly interesting example of a juvenile Atlantic sturgeon. This is a fish that was probably born here in the Hudson River, not far from Marist College, uh, just a few months ago this spring. And uh, here in August, it's about six or seven inches long. But if it had lived and matured and lived a long, full life, it might have reached eight or ten or even a dozen feet long. Sturgeon are anadromous fish. What that means is they're born in freshwater, and the Hudson River here, 80 miles from New York Harbor, is freshwater. But the Hudson's also an estuary with a direct connection to the sea. So this little sturgeon was probably trying to make its way back to the ocean, where it would live for years and years and years and mature before finally, hopefully someday, returning to freshwater to spawn. So that's what an anadromous fish is. It's a fish that spends part of its life in freshwater, part of its life in saltwater. Now the sturgeon has some remarkable adaptations, some remarkable things that it has to help it survive. One of the most visible things are these rows of bony plates called scoots. And there's a nice sharp row here on the top, but there's also rows along the side and bottom of the fish as well. And on, on this individual, they're razor sharp like teeth. And they obviously offer terrific protection for the fish. Sturgeon are interesting in that they have a lot of shark-like qualities and a lot of traditional bony fish qualities. If you look at their tail, the top part of their tail is much longer than the bottom part of their tail, almost like a shark. And in fact, if you were to look at the skeleton of the sturgeon, there's a lot of cartilage in that skeleton, just like sharks and their relatives. But there's also bone in here, and it shares a lot of traits with bony fish that we're more familiar with. This general body plan, the sturgeon family of fish, have been around for over 200 million years. That means when dinosaurs were out thumping around on land, sturgeon were cruising their way through the shallow seas and estuaries. Uh, just an incredible animal. When we, when we look at the, the underside of the head of the sturgeon, we can see some more amazing things. First of all, you can see that the sturgeon head is very, very flat on the bottom. And if you notice this mouth, this mouth here can actually extend out like a tube, like a vacuum cleaner. And in fact, the sturgeon is a bottom feeder. It's hard to see, but it has very small whiskers called barbels on its, on its nose here that it uses to sense prey in the water. When it finds something to eat, some bottom-dwelling animal, that mouth comes in, <laughs> slurps that right up like a vacuum cleaner. So they're bottom feeders. Um, they're not dangerous to people. They're not going to bite swimmers or fishermen or anything like that. But if you do catch one, a big animal is always a, a, a risk to, to try and take into a boat. So really, throughout this country, you probably shouldn't be going fishing for sturgeon. Uh, many species of sturgeon are endangered worldwide, and it's an animal that we're trying very, very hard to conserve. That's why seeing a dead one like this is, is very sad in some ways, but it also gives us a remarkable chance to examine this fish up close and personal. That's the Atlantic sturgeon on the banks of the Hudson River in Poughkeepsie, New York.